Hello and welcome to the news this week at Gaming Bolt, and today we're going to talk about The Elder Scrolls 6. The Elder Scrolls 6 is a ways off yet, but that hasn't stopped anyone, least of all us, from speculating on what the game might be about and what features it may or may not include. We may now have some information on what the plot for Elder Scrolls 6 might be, and though it isn't entirely concrete, it definitely qualifies as interesting, because Bethesda may have hinted at it way back in Morrowind. Take a look at the image above, uploaded by Imgur user Stagsdale. At first glance, it looks like nothing more than a throwaway bit of lore-laden dialogue, but there's a chance that it may be much more than that. The image shows a conversation with Loros Serrano in Alderaan in which he talks about the Akivari, a race of serpent-like vampires making preparations to invade the Empire. Serrano fears that it may happen after some crisis, like the Empire collapsing in civil war, and that the Dunmer may need a horde tour to lead them in battle in such a scenario. If you played Skyrim, this may sound familiar. The Empire was facing a veritable civil war in the game, with the Imperials going up against a rebelling group of Nords over the dispute of Talos, while the Emperor himself was also killed by the player character as part of the Dark Brotherhood questline. All of this definitely counts as a crisis, and there's no doubting that the Empire is weaker now than ever before. Of course, Skyrim took place over two centuries after Morrowind, so the Akivari have probably been patiently waiting for their opportunity for a long time. But if this were indeed to be the plot to the Elder Scrolls VI, it might see the players acting as the Hortator to an army of the Dunmer in conflict against the invading Akivari. This isn't the first time that something like this has happened with the series either. In the Tribunal expansion of Morrowind, a character talked about how the Gates of Oblivion would open and the Daedra would roam the world freely. In case you haven't put two and two together, this is the exact plot of the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Of course, this isn't concrete by any means, take it with a generous grain of salt, and there are literally thousands of similar lore-related references and dialogues in Morrowind and all other Elder Scrolls games, and there's nothing to suggest that this specific one in particular has any more meaning than the others. That said, leading a defense against an army of the invading Akivari would certainly be an excellent backdrop for the Elder Scrolls VI. Now for some actual Bethesda news, Bethesda Game Studios have opened up a brand new studio in Austin, Texas. Well, opened up is a bit misleading, since what's actually happened is that they have absorbed Battlecry Studios. Battlecry Studios was founded in 2012, and is led by studio director Doug Mellencamp, who is an industry veteran and has worked on several AAA games. His experience would prove to be useful to Bethesda. Now this is Bethesda's third major studio, and the second they've opened in the last few years, the first one being in Montreal. The interesting thing is that in all this time, Bethesda has announced no new project. But clearly, they're working on something, right? What could it be? And could we be nearing its announcement? After all, E3 is almost here and Bethesda is holding their own press conference again this year. Maybe they could announce a new Bethesda Game Studios game like, oh, say, Starfield? Speaking of announcing games, during a recent briefing for Artifact, Valve's upcoming not free-to-play card game, President Gabe Newell announced that the company was going to be releasing several more games in the coming months. As per PC Gamer, Newell said that Artifact was the first of several new releases. Artifact is the first of several games that are going to be coming from us, so that's sort of good news. Hooray, Valve's going to start shipping games again, he said. Newell expressed interest in Nintendo's approach of creating games and the hardware together, as seen with the Nintendo Switch. He then confessed that the company has always been a little bit jealous of companies like Nintendo. When Miyamoto is sitting down and thinking about the next version of Zelda or Mario, he's thinking, what is the controller going to look like? What sort of graphics and other capabilities? He can introduce new capabilities like motion input because he controls both of those things. And he can make the hardware look as good as possible because he's designing the software at the same time that's really going to take advantage of it. So that is something we've been jealous of, and that's something that you'll see us taking advantage of subsequently. While we're not sure if that means Valve will try creating its own console eventually, the company has seen rather mixed success in the field with its Steam machines, Steam controllers, and even the HTC Vive. That being said, the company is focusing on releasing new games, so that's good news. Whether that means follow-ups to Portal and Left 4 Dead will be coming remains to be seen, but it's possible the developer will simply introduce new IPs as it goes along. And no, Half-Life 3 is not one of those games, let the meme die already. As for other new game announcements, following the positive reception to Tom Clancy's The Division in recent months, especially with Update 1.8 and how it brought players back to the game, Ubisoft Massive has announced that The Division 2 is in development. Creative director Julian Garrity stated that the development is led by Massive Entertainment and driven by close collaboration with Ubisoft Annecy, Red Storm, Reflections, Ubisoft Bucharest, and Ubisoft Shanghai. The Division 2 will be based on an updated version of the Snowdrop engine that will help us realize our ambitions for this title. Garrity further noted the impact of feedback from players and how it helped improve the first game in numerous ways, especially when it comes to the sequel. 
More importantly, we can also invest all the experience we've accumulated over the past two years in this sequel to make sure everything is going well, he said. This isn't to say that The Division is done just yet. There will be two more title updates, two brand new global events, more legendary difficulty missions, and an Xbox One X update that will support 4K resolution and 1080p. Garrity further noted that the team cannot wait to show you what we have planned for The Division 2 during the E3 2018 in June. The timing of the announcement is pretty interesting, but it seems The Division 2 would still be a ways off from release, perhaps in 2019 or early 2020. Either way, it will be interesting to see if The Division 2 furthers the experience currently present in the base game or pulls a Destiny 2 and strips away everything players love. Time will tell. Speaking of games that will be releasing in 2019, the official PlayStation website noted that SIE Ben Studios' Days Gone was releasing in 2019, and it only seemed a matter of time before Sony either announced it was a mistake or officially delayed the game. Sure enough, Days Gone has been officially delayed to 2019. Sony spoke to GameSpot and said that we can confirm that Days Gone will now be releasing in 2019 and we'll keep you updated on the launch date. Reasons for the delay were not provided, and to be fair, it's not like we were given a solid release date in the first place, aside from, quote, 2018, unquote. Given how development works out these days, anything that has it straight up gone gold should always be viewed with skepticism. Regardless, Days Gone hasn't had a huge presence in recent times. It first debuted at E3 2016 and impressed its fair share of onlookers with its crowds of zombies realistically spilling over each other. We do know that there are a whole bunch of hours of cinematics, according to Sam Witwer who plays Deacon St. John via Star Citizen Community Content Manager Jared Huckabee, but it looks like we'll have to wait a bit longer to know more about the game. Gilmero Del Toro won big at the Oscars last night, with his The Shape of Water netting the Best Picture and Best Director awards. To congratulate him on his win, Hideo Kojima, who is working with Del Toro on the upcoming Death Stranding, which will be starring Del Toro in some capacity, shared a new image from the game with Del Toro in it. We say new image, but really, it's an older image with some awards flavor text pasted over it. Still, it's a pretty nice gesture, and it's also a good way for him to simultaneously keep the fire stoked for the millions of Kojima fans around the world who are still looking forward to his next game or any news of it, really. You can check out the tweet and the new image for yourself below. Death Stranding is due out at some point in the future, exclusively for the PS4 at launch. Sometime after, it will also come to PC. It's been a few months now, but we're sure you still remember the controversy over Star Wars Battlefronts 2's egregious implementation of loot boxes and microtransactions. In an attempt to defend the fact that players would have to spend dozens of hours to unlock characters like Darth Vader short of paying for them outright, EA stated on Reddit that the intent was to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment upon unlocking the character. That comment went on to become the most downvoted comment in Reddit history. And now, some modder for the PC version of the game has decided to further stick it to EA by making it a skin for loot boxes. Modder Derry DeVocal has turned the motto into a skin for loot boxes, using the famous Star Wars movie logo font for his PC mod via PC Gamer as well. It's actually pretty funny. Of course, EA has definitely not learned from the backlash surrounding the game, especially when they've reiterated their intent to reintroduce microtransactions, which were frozen right back into the game. So there is that, we suppose. Don't expect too much focus on Star Wars Battlefront 2, especially when Battlefield 5 releases later this year. As of right now, all leaks point towards this year's Battlefield game, for now rumored to be called Battlefield 5, that's not the official name, to be set in the Second World War, which would make it the first game in the series in over a decade to return to that setting. Now, an additional leak coming from YouTuber Drake's Den sheds light on what more to expect from the new game. Battlefield 5 is expected to be an iterative evolution of Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1 and is going to use the same engine as Battlefield 1 and Star Wars Battlefront 2. The game is going to have four classes, Assault, Support, Recon, and Engineer, or the same four that DICE have basically stuck with for the past few years, as well as Elite classes, Behemoths, and Kit Weapons. Operations mode will be returning and vehicles are going to be in the game, controlling more like they do in Battlefield 4. Bullet deviation is apparently gone, gun variants will no longer factor in, and microtransactions will only be cosmetic, which, after the blowback for DICE's own Battlefront 2, makes complete sense. The game will come with 10 maps, and apparently 7 playable factions. Great Britain, United States, Free French Forces, Third Reich, Kingdom of Italy, USSR, and Imperial Japan. Remember, as detailed as this leak is, it remains unsubstantiated. In many ways, it sounds like a fan's wish list for the next game in the series. Even if all this turns out to be true, it's best to treat it as nothing more than a rumor until it's all officially confirmed. Battlefield 5 will be launching in October this year for PS4, Xbox One, and PC.
Since it seems so many games are skipping 2018 and releasing in 2019 or even 2020, some have predicted that the PS5 will only be out by 2020 and not earlier than that since the PS4 continues to sell well. Now as the year draws closer to E3, new rumors have sprung up which suggest that the release of the next generation of PlayStation consoles may not be so far away. This new information has been revealed by industry insider Marcus Sellers, who stated that the PS5 dev kits were sent out to third-party developers earlier this year. This means that the company will soon start production of and for the PS5. However, looking at the success of the PS4 and the recent release of the PS4 Pro, it's likely that it will at least be a while before the next generation of PlayStation is released. It's only been four years since the release of the PS4, so it will likely be a while before they're phased out by Sony. Take this report with a grain of salt, but Sellers has so far proven to be a solid insider. In another far future game news, Rockstar Games is busy developing Red Dead Redemption 2 and will pour plenty of resources into supporting its online mode. However, Grand Theft Auto 6 also seems to be in some form of development, according to an inside source that spoke to The No. Apparently, Grand Theft Auto 6 will release sometime in 2022 and features the series' first female protagonist. Along with taking place in Vice City, GTA's take on South Florida, players will also head to South America for a few missions. There's been no word yet on whether multiple main characters will be present like in Grand Theft Auto V. Take this report with massive grains of salt. Regardless, the hosts themselves insist on labeling this as a rumor, so don't get too excited. What are your thoughts on Grand Theft Auto potentially returning to Vice City, a location we haven't seen since Grand Theft Auto Vice City in 2002 and Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories in 2006? Let us know in the comments below. And that brings us to the megaton Nintendo fans have been waiting for in 2008. Super Smash Bros. has been confirmed for the Nintendo Switch as the final announcement during this week's Nintendo Direct. Incredibly enough, the game has been confirmed for, well, 2018. Now the teaser was short, so we don't have much information beyond that, but there are some things we can infer regardless. First off, Inklings will be newcomers for this game, which anyone should have guessed given how big Splatoon has gotten as a franchise. Secondly, it seems like the design for Link has been updated to his Breath of the Wild look, which again makes total sense given Breath of the Wild's success. From that, we can further assume that the design for Zelda herself might also be based on her Breath of the Wild design. Given the logo, there is also a chance that this Smash isn't an entirely new game, but that it is built upon the existing Smash Brothers for 3DS and Wii U, but that's going to be hard to tell until we learn more about the game hopefully soon, because it's due out this year, presumably in September, to coincide with the launch of Nintendo's paid online service, so we should get details coming in fast. That'll be it for this video. If you like what we're doing, please go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.